All right, everybody, long time coming. This is the ultimate Windows deep loading guide. Now listen carefully because Windows 11 is not Windows 7. It's not Windows XP. We're dealing with spaghetti code. Things may break if you don't understand what I'm saying or do it properly. So don't just blindly go and run some tools that I will be talking about. Watch this video and that will hopefully give you an understanding of how you can make meaningful changes to your Windows and get rid of some of the annoying privacy, security and performance issues that you might be trying to avoid. Now, to keep it simple at the start, I'm going to mention a couple tools right off the bat. One is going to be Windows 11 Deep Loader, and the other is going to be the Ultimate Windows Tweaker. So what we can do with Win 11 Deep Loader is run some very basic tweaks that can change certain Windows settings. And the best part about this tool is all it's doing is running a PowerShell scripts and it's completely transparent. So for example, say I want to disable Cortana. It shows you what it's going to do. If you want to disable background apps from the Windows Store, you can just add that to the list of things. Or if you just want to get rid of OneDrive, you can do that without affecting anything else. And once you've selected what you want to do, you just have to run the script and it's going to load up PowerShell you can also just run what it considers are essential tweaks. This is going to, for example, disable screen recording in the background, which is what Game DVR does. It's going to disable location tracking, activity history, remembering what files you open. So basically just a bunch of spying features. Wi-Fi Sense is another important security feature. I mean, it's a security problem. Disabling it would be the feature. So what this does is it automatically connects you to Wi-Fi hotspots without your knowledge in the background constantly pinging data back and forth. So if you don't want that, you probably want to get rid of it anyway. it will also disable telemetry. it will disable power throttling. It's going to set a lot of the Windows services to manual startup so they don't start up automatically. It also has some presets. So you can pick ones for desktop, laptop, and there are obviously going to be some differences. So for example, if you're running a laptop, you might want to use hibernation features and enable power throttling to save battery life. It's also got a setting for virtual machines which I kind of like and then you've also got the option of fine-tuning or install third-party apps. Now, all of this is done with WinGet. You can also tweak some Windows Defender settings here, but honestly, I would recommend not to use this tool for that. If you want to make individual granular changes to Windows policies, you should be using the Group Policy Editor. So if you go into Group Policy, just type it into Start, you will see your local computer policy here, and you can go into Administrative Templates and Windows Components, and in here, you're going to find all the Windows features that are there. And each of these, will have a lot of settings like for example app privacy some of these may be accessible in your actual settings like right here but some of these may not so for example if you wanted to make changes to windows defender smart screen you could just select this component select enhance phishing protection if you wanted to use it and you could enable it of course i understand not everybody is going to have an hour to go through every single group policy setting so next up we're going to talk about another tool which is called ultimate windows tweaker it allows you to quickly customize some important visual things, like if you wanted to disable transparency effects, if you want to change the color of the title bar, and also make some important privacy tweaks. Like you can turn off user tracking right here or disable the Mobility Center or OneDrive. Now, if you already have Windows installed and you can't do a reinstall, you can skip this step, but I'm just going to talk about it briefly. But if you're sick and tired of jumping through hoops to set a local account instead of signing into Microsoft, or you just want something that doesn't come pre-installed with Candy Crush, you could try Atlas OS. Of course, there are risks anytime you download a third-party OS that somebody may bundle something with it. Even if it's not happening today, somebody could, hey, infiltrate trade their supply chain and a hacker could put their back door in there but so could they with Microsoft. I don't like the general idea of distrusting every single community project just because it could be compromised because all the big vendors that told us to trust them have already been compromised at some point. But you do have to keep in mind that these distros will remove a lot of security features and often a lot of security updates. So unless you really know what you're doing, avoid them. Another good one though is Co-Spectre. That's fairly easy to use, but just be sensible. If you're running something super important, maybe do a serious audit of the third 
third-party distro you install or just stick to the official builds. I also want to talk about the elephant in the room, which is the Edge browser. So any Windows system, if you're running it, you're going to find a ton of Microsoft Edge processes, whether or not it's running. It's always there in the background. Even if you use Firefox, even if you use Brave, Edge is always running in the background as part of the operating system and still trying to track you. Unfortunately, while you can limit the tracking via various things, and I've made separate videos about blocking specific lookups that Microsoft does, there's no real easy way to remove Edge from your computer completely. Luckily, there is a GitHub project to do so. So if you are a power user and for whatever reason you really want to remove Edge, this is one that works. So you can go into Shadow Whisperer's GitHub repo and they have an option to run a simple binary that's going to remove Edge or Edge and WebView. Now keep in mind, removing these components, which are now baked into the operating system, will break a lot of different apps. So for example, if you remove WebView, you're going to break Windows Mail, Windows Photo Apps, the edit functionality, the Xbox app. Not to mention, sometimes removing Edge might completely destroy your ability to update Windows. So this is not something I would recommend lightly. And if you don't have very specific use case for it, then don't do this. But for those of us who do, you can just download one of these binaries and run it, and it is going to get rid of it. So for example, on this system, as you can see, magic. I don't have Microsoft Edge installed at all. Can you believe it? If I look at Process Explorer, not a single edge process, which is very rare. So we've covered a lot. So I wanna to touch on some key points. When you're disabling things using the tools that I just mentioned, do make sure that you understand what you're doing. So for example, if you disable location services, don't be surprised if you're searching in Google Maps and it doesn't detect your location, or if you're using the weather app and it doesn't automatically find where you are. A lot of these tweaks are going to change the way Windows behaves. So the goal of this video is not to say everybody should run every single tweak that's discussed here, or just blindly go into these apps and start messing with your Windows, most likely that is not going to make your computer faster. If you have a really old and slow system, the best way to speed it up is going to be to get better hardware, to get a faster processor and get more RAM. No magic software tweak is going to make your computer run faster. But at the same time, some of us do like to have control over what our computer is doing. We don't wanna be pinging random Wi-Fi networks all the time. We don't want to be running 20 different overlays that could crash and mess up our experience or annoy us with stupid notifications if we just want to run a normal computer like we used to with Windows 7. And this video is for that. It's to allow you to use these tools to take back some control, get rid of features you don't want, don't need. So I hope this video helped. Do you like and share it if it did? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you survive with Windows 11? Do you like it the way it is or are there some essential tweaks you do? You feel you need to make. I also want to thank the sponsor of this video, Pulseway, a remote monitoring and management solution that allows you to monitor and automate tasks across all your systems. So say you wanted to use the scripts that we've been talking about, not just for your own system, but if you're managing the IT for a large organization, you could just go ahead and output the PowerShell, copy and paste this into Pulseway by creating a new script going into Windows, and you're welcome to do this for Linux as well if you wanna automate tasks there. Essentially, you can save this on the Pulseway platform and then deploy it to all your systems. They'll say we wanna remove OneDrive. In this example, we can just call it that, save it, and then you can go to your device management and then select all your devices, and here you can run the script and then OneDrive's gonna be uninstalled across all your systems. So this is a really useful tool if you're managing a ton of systems. They currently have a 20% discount, which you can get using link in description. So if you're managing a lot of systems or are into automation, do check them out using link in description. Show them some love for supporting the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.